Hello everybody, welcome to my talk. Uh, this is my last summary for uh, the five second rule. I finished, finished chapter 17 as the last chapter. I just read it and it was one of my favorites. Um, let me read you. Like, you know, it has these little big word sayings every, right before, you know, every chapter. And they're all really good. You know, maybe next Thursday I'll just read all of them because they're so cool. Like, there's 17 of these and they're all amazing. But it says, don't tell people your dreams, show them. It's, it's, and it's, yes, you know, it's like, I hate people that are saying things and saying things and, and telling you that you're not worthy and they are. And all they do is say it, but they don't show it, right? It's better to, to show people so, sh so people can say, oh, good job, you know? You don't have to be telling them what you did because they can see it. <coughs> Anyhow, and the, the name of the chapter is Enrich Your Relationships. And it's based on the whole chapter is uh, just say it. Just say what you feel, when you feel it. Don't let your brain tell you not to do it or, or tell you that they're not going to like what you say that they're gonna get mad or whatever just do it and whatever the outcome is at least you said what you meant or what you felt and um, it's not left unsaid because most of the stories well uh, the biggest story here is about a, a lady that and it might not be the biggest but it's the one I remember because I thought oh my god so um, it, it was a lady that wrote to Mel and told her this is what happened to me. So she had a neighbor that she loved and um, and she had a son and her son was friends with the neighbor's son. And you know, they grew up together, they knew them like family. And then the young kid went to the army and he was gone for a while. And then she went and saw him at the grocery store, but he was far away. And you know, I I've had the, the, those instances where I see people I know, and instead of like going and saying, hey, like I kind of hide and walk away so I don't have to bump into them and say hi. And I don't know why, because it's not like I don't like him or I don't remember them with like excitement. I don't know what it is. Because I'm not even a person that cares too much for, you know, how my hair <laughs> looks or the clothes I'm wearing. So it's not that, oh, I don't want him to see me like this. I just, I don't know. I just would rather not. But it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So anyway, this lady saw this kid over there and thought, oh, he's too far and, you know, I'm old and he's not going to want to talk to me. But I'm happy to see him. I'm happy that you see her visiting his mom or whatever, whatever. So she leaves and she leaves him there. And then she goes back to the store again and sees him again. But this time he's like closer. But he's talking to somebody. And he's talking to somebody and she notices his smile. You know, little kids. They And to me, little kids are, you know, 20s and down. They're still little to me. But um, he, he was in his 20s, he was in his arm, the army. And um, she saw him, he, he was smiling, and she remember, I, I remember that smile from when he was growing up with my child, and he was always happy, he always did good, always, you know, good kid. And she said, should I talk to him? No, I don't want to interrupt their conversation, yada, yada, yada. She left, and like, I don't remember if it was the same day or a week later, but I think it was New Year's. He he went out or whatever, and he was killed by a hit and run. And like she wrote to Mel telling her how she, uh, you know, um, I forget the word. I forget the word, but she she wishes she would have talked to him and told him, 
how excited she was that he was back, that he was visiting his mom, that he was here, that she got to see him. And she never did, and he never knew how she felt ab about him, because she didn't talk to him, even though she did have the feeling, right? Um, and it like touched my heart because, like I said, I've done that many a time, and, and it's like, you might never see these people again, not that they die, maybe somebody from high school and you see them and you recognize them and you don't say hi and then you never see them again and I just think you should just say hi to everybody because it feels good for people to recognize you so anyway uh, that's mostly what this is about uh, it, you know to, to say the things that you need to say and um, also, there was a story about her and her dad, and, and she said, I believe it was her husband, like she told the, her grandmother, her husband's grandmother or something, was going to get an operation, and they said, okay, see you later. And the person went in the hospital room, and they were waiting for her, and she never came out, she didn't make it, and they're all like, oh my god. You know? So then her dad, Mel Robbins' dad, was going to get surgery. And, and Mel Robbins was like nervous about about it because she knew what had happened to, to her husband's grandma. And so I was like, oh, what if he doesn't make it? Like, I'm so scared, yada, yada, yada. And she said, oh, I wish I knew how my dad feels about it. And she said, oh, but I don't want to tell him because I don't want to make him worry or make him feel sad or whatever. And then she said, you know what, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and she asked them, Dad, are you scared? And, and then they started to have this conversation where he said he wasn't scared, uh, that he lived a long time because he's an older gentleman, and then, uh, I think he's in his, in his 80s, and then at the end she, he tells her, you know, if I live to be 90, I want to jump off a uh, Para, para, parachute, like I guess George Bush did that, or the dad, uh, and one of them jumped off on their 90th birthday, and so they had a like really cool conversation right before the surgery, and at least she told them how she felt, and she knew how he felt about it, and he went in and he came back out, but she didn't want to keep that inside because you never know. Right? And, uh, you know, there were several stories like that, but all of them, uh, you have to say your things. You have to say it. If it's good, if it's bad, just fight for three to one and just say it. Don't be shy. Don't get nervous. It's important that the other people know, you know, your feelings. And that was it. And then, like, the closing thing he says all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them and that was for Walt Disney anywho it was, it was a great read it gives you a lot of pointers and it tells you don't be stupid you know do your thing you're like five four three two one don't let like your mind is your worst enemy because your mind is the one that tells you no, don't do it because this is going to happen. It's just the stories you form in your mind and it doesn't let you move forward. So one of the things I remember from the book is that she says if you do think about like something and don't let your mind tell you not to do it, you immediately say five, four, three, two, one, and when you hit one, just do it. Do it before your mind starts making the stories that are going to make you not do it. And with that, I leave you and maybe I'll read all the big letter pages to you next week because they're really cool. And then I'll start the Jay Shetty book. I'm so excited about that too. So I'll see you next time and thank you for listening to me. If you want more summaries, just keep on watching every Thursday.